<laughs> there goes that leg. Wow. This is an insane day of work. Woo. <laughs> Here comes a plane. <laughs> Oh man, that's cool. <laughs> Today on TFL Bike, I'm going to sort of drag race a plane on, on this bike. I mean, the plane's not going to be going at full speed, I guess, but I am going to ride alongside a plane, and we're also going to do full reviews on a bunch of these Kuberg electric bikes. They're somewhere in between a motorcycle and an e-bike, they're a boatload of fun to ride. So here's what's going on. Today we are in Moab, Utah, checking out some really cool electric bikes from a company called Kuberg. And I have Amon here, who is one of the main guys for the US distribution for these bikes. And walk us through some of what's going on here. So we have a bunch of different models from your lineup, um, but we'll kind of start out with the most popular, and this is the Ranger, right? Yeah, correct. So. This is, this is probably the most popular adult bike that they, that they sell. It's a very unique bike, has a very low center of gravity, as you can see. Um, has a skid plate instead of your traditional pegs. Um, this is really popular and only comes in at about 110 pounds. Um, so it's really lightweight, a lot of power, a lot more power than a lot of the competition in the space. Um, so these bikes come in an eight kilowatt and a 12 and then a 14 kilowatt. So this version right here is, is the 14 kilowatt. So this is about, as fast as you can get um, right. with these bikes. Really good acceleration, um, really easy to handle. And um, a couple of features that this has that people really like is it actually has a drop, dropper post, similar to what you see on a mountain bike. Yeah. You can drop your seat out of the way and you can ride. Yeah, which is kind of cool because my mountain bike has a dropper post, but it's not nearly this substantial of yeah. a seat. But that's what's interesting about these bikes is, is size and weight wise, uh, they're almost more like an e-bike or a bicycle, but in terms of power output, top speed, those kind of things, they're more bordering on motorcycle specs because what, I'm top speed on this is around 50? About, yeah, 50, 55. Yeah, so it's actually pretty powerful. And this specifically is 14 uh, kilowatt output, right? Yep. And then this is the bigger battery as well? Yep, so this is the 48 amp hour battery. And you can get, so, the thing about these electric bikes is depending on how you ride really depends on how long you can you can go if you're yeah. if you're full out just like riding really hard you'll get as low as like 25 30 miles on this um, if you're going really easy using the regenerative braking a lot um, you can get closer to 50 or 60 miles on it so it, it varies a lot um, depending on your riding style and I know this so the smaller battery is a 24 amp hour battery yeah. and that battery pack, uh, you guys were saying, kind of follows the lines of the frame, so this bigger battery sticks out a little bit further. Yeah, a little bit further, and they, they look very similar, though. Yeah, and then in terms of charging, um, it's around about two and a half hours with a quicker charger, right? Yep, yep, so these, these charge faster than a lot of the other bikes in the industry. Um, they're about, uh, you can you can get, I think it's like the 10% to 80% you can get in, in about an hour. Okay. And so, and that's usually enough to get you back out and riding, especially if you're riding around. Um, for a full charge, it's closer to two hours. Okay. And, uh, and so it's kind of cool with these bikes because I know some of your competitors like uh like the surons their their output is more around six kilowatts right yep and then these start out at eight and then you can go all the way up to 14 so these are higher end much more powerful alternatives to something yep. like that and so pricing on something like this ranger where does that start yeah so they are a little bit more expensive than some of the competitors and i'll kind of explain why um but yeah so the base version of this comes in around 65 and can go all the way up to around 75 right for, for the highest version and the things that you're getting for kind of that premium price is not only are you getting more power like a, a more powerful controller like longer range with this bigger battery yeah but also the suspension is is really good suspension yeah um, this suspension comes in at about fifteen hundred dollars more expensive than the the stock suspension that comes on your Suron, for example. Okay. Yeah, and I can see you've even got some adjustment here. Yeah. Same thing on that uh, on that rear shock, which is pretty rad. From what I was told, this is one of the more popular models that you guys sell because of the way that it rides, because of its low center of gravity. 
but that a lot of times people come into the showroom more expecting to like something like the free rider yep exactly like if you look from like a looks and riding style perspective this is probably more of a direct competitor to your suron and Talaria. right um it is a lot lighter though this comes in at about 80 pounds versus your your suron's about 110 your Talaria nice. can get up around 130. and in, in terms of power output you're going to be looking at the same yep. 8 12 and 14 yep. kilowatt so, power so they outputs. actually make these really modular so these they take the same controllers this one you can see here it's a 12 kilowatt that one's an eight kilowatt so these are the smaller bikes right um but yeah and then these batteries are smaller than what you have on the ranger right Correct. so it's going to be not as much range yep. but again it's also a lighter more compact probably more performance oriented bike and then these two are also in different wheelbase and wheel sizes right yep so this, uh, these are 30 amp hour batteries. They used to make it in a 20 amp hour battery, but now they only make them in 30 amp hour batteries. So, you know, 30 compared to your 48, so you're gonna right. get less range, similar power. Um, and so like uh, proportionately, it's gonna be that much less range as yeah. what you can expect on your Ranger. Pricing on these? Yeah, so these these are, your lowest end is gonna start closer to 55, and then okay. your higher end is gonna be closer to oh, 75. All right, so we've got Alex on the free rider and I'm on the big bad 14 kilowatt output Ranger. Yep. So we're we're gonna get these bikes over some dirt, see how they yeah. feel. I'm loving the suspension already on this. These yeah, are it looks so super soft. squishy. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> yeah, oh, and the other cool thing is that these bikes are super light. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's try them out a little bit. I'm gonna pop my seat down. This is, it's, it's a strange feeling popping the seat down because you get like into a full squat position. But once it's down, it feels like there's nothing underneath you. I mean, I can really move my body wherever I want it to be. So it's almost like, I mean, you know, it feels kind of like a mountain bike with, uh, with the seat post down. Because I can really, I can shift the bike anywhere. It's always amazing when I get on really any e-bike, just how light and maneuverable they are. The power on this is really good. And like I said, when I first hopped on talking to Case, suspension is really soft, especially in the rear. And this isn't the rockiest terrain in the world, but I could see myself spending a lot of time in one day on this and not getting too worn out, especially because it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to throw these around. The other really cool thing is that I don't have to use the brakes. I can slow down with uh, with regen by rolling my hand forward. So I'll show you, I'm moving. I roll my hand forward and it slows down really aggressively. And I was worried that that was kind of going to happen by accident, but you have to put some force into it for it to do that. So it's really useful. Suspension is nice and compliant. A lot of times when you're on something like an e-bike, the bike itself is kind of heavy for the suspension components it has, but this one, it rides really smooth and feels like suspension is properly suited to the weight of this bike, of which there isn't much. This bike is not heavy at all. It doesn't feel heavy in the slightest. This feels incredibly light and it's also it's really powerful so there's different power settings i've got it in its most aggressive power setting right now and if i get on the throttle it it spins that back tire pretty easy and then you can get moving at a <laughs> at a really good clip really good traction too out of these tires but you give it enough throttle and it definitely likes to spin up the rear which is really fun actually. And man, these things definitely get up to speed pretty well. And yeah, you know, it's interesting. This front wheel is a lot bigger than the rear wheel, which looks like it would be kind of strange, but to ride doesn't feel odd at all. Um, I mean, you really don't even notice what the back tire looks like or how big the diameter on it is because and it's behind you. You're just kind of focused on the front end. This would be such a fun way to go do some exploration of some different trails because 
for one, it's really easy to ride. This low center of gravity makes it, I mean, no sweat at all. Even when you get on the throttle hard and the back end starts to slide a little bit, it's not a big deal. Also, because of how light these are, it's super easy to go really slow. Look at that crawl pace. And I'm able to hold my balance really well doing that. Which if you're out on a super technical trail, that'd be a major advantage to something like this over, let's say a Suron that they said is way heavier than this. Or like Case and I were just out on a TW200. And yeah, that's one of the smallest and lightest dual sports you can get, but it doesn't come anywhere close to how maneuverable and easy to manage this is on a trail. The other cool thing about doing some exploration on it is that this bike is silent. And because of that, you can hear the environment around you. So it's it's just a really cool experience. So we're not doing any super techie riding right here, but for this kind of thing, I mean, going down a trail and seeing what's around you, this is perfect. If you had a big property, you wanted to do some riding? Oh man, what do you think dude? Dude, this is so fun. Do you want to try this one? I do. I've ridden a few e-bikes. I'm not a super experienced e-bike rider. This is like, maybe it's the terrain we're on. I think it's a combination of the terrain and the bike. This is the first time I've been like, yeah, I'd buy an e-bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're really good. I mean, I know they're expensive, but uh, you know, you're getting really nice components here and uh, and they're a lot of fun to ride. You know, they sound expensive, but I really don't think they are. My mountain bike that doesn't have an electric motor was like five grand. Yeah, so. that's true. Yeah, if you were to get one of my bikes brand new, I mean, the frame is 3,400 bucks yeah. for my mountain bike. So yeah, I mean, this compared to that, yeah, I love my mountain bike. I, I'm not gonna sell it, but there's, there's an argument to be made for this being more fun. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. I wanna try yeah. that one, cause Let's that looks them. crazy unique. Now, this, I know it's the lighter bike. Oh, and already, it's very, very different. It takes some getting used to. Already I can tell that the bars on this one are definitely wider, and I like that. The seat on this, not nearly as squishy and comfortable to sit down on as the one I just got off of, but that's kind of the point, right? This one's got the seat that goes out of the way, and the fact that it's a little stiff and not super comfortable encourages you to drop the seat down and really ride it how it's supposed to be ridden. Yeah, so this is the uh, 12 kilowatt output bike and still, I mean, we're moving at a good clip here. <laughs> there goes Alec. Wow, yeah. That shows you how much quicker the Ranger is. <laughs> I like this one better. I see what the guys are talking about. They said most people gravitate towards the other one because of the looks and then they ride them both and they end up wanting to buy this one and that's exactly the experience i'm having this is just so different and that forward twist of the throttle super clever and works really well i think the suspension's a little more compliant on the last bike i rode but this is still plenty good and i'm sure at some point there'll be aftermarket options for shocks and forks And you could really dial this in for your riding style. Dude, I know that Andy really wanted uh, some of those cake calcs to use as, as bikes to learn on. He should get these. <laughs> yeah, this is probably even better. Yeah, this thing's really fun. I think that's a little more natural getting on it if you're used to dirt bikes and like motorcycles, mountain bikes. It's a little easier, I think, to ride that. And this is a little different. You get on it, it takes a little more brain power. Um, and you know, it's just a little different. So you're using your body differently, but I'd still get this one. I think, yeah, and I'm the same way. I, I think uh, you get used to that one really quickly. Cause when I went from that to this, I was thinking, whoa, 
where where went that low center of gravity I was used to so honestly it took a it, it took a little bit of getting used to to go from that back to something more like this yeah coming around that turn right there I kind of buried the front a little bit and it started to tuck a little bit but the weight's so low on it you just straighten the bar back out and it just yeah it's it, super forgiving yeah it's really forgiving if I were on that or like the TW 200 we have in the truck and I was same steering angle in that same turn I would be on the ground right now so this this Ranger this is the one again the cool thing too is that you can start out with a base model and then if you want to upgrade it over time they're pretty modular these guys were telling us so uh, you can upgrade it later on if you feel like you want the bigger battery or the higher output but man when you pass me on the runway this thing's got some speed yeah you guys were saying that this is kind of how the company started yeah. was was more along the lines of kids bikes but what's crazy about this so this is more of one of the entry versions of this smaller electric bike and it almost looks like like a little razor scooter mm -hmm. but this is a lot more serious than yeah. a razor scooter <laughs> yeah a lot more power um, your suspension is obviously a lot higher quality so they they kind of measure these in terms of of like age groups so this right. right here is like you're about three to six years old um, right that are going to be riding this bike this this one is going to be closer to like five to twelve years old um, they actually do have a, a bigger version of this um, we do have one in stock we don't have a demo of it right now but it's it actually has the eight kilowatt controller that's on this bike <laughs> and so that one's way powerful they they use it for racing and those types of things it's it's closer to your like 50 cc race bikes yeah. One thing, so. what's crazy is I, I very briefly have already hopped on this and even this being the less powerful version of this bike, it's very close to being able to power wheelie. You only have to throw your weight back a little bit to get that front end up. So that would be a badass little pit bike. But the other cool thing about something, even this little guy, is that you guys were telling me you can set up a geofence you can go on your phone and you can really adjust the power output so that if you have a kid that's starting out on it there's no chance of the bike running out from under yeah. them yeah to give you an example i've, I've got a three-year-old so so you, there's an app you can download for this um, it has a little um, a little module that you'll have to install onto it and buy that separately um, but once you install it, you can log into your bike on your app and you can change a lot of parameters. Um, top speed, you can change, like, like you were mentioning, geofencing, right? Yeah. You can, um, if you're out camping and you don't want your kids to go past a certain place, you just make it so it shuts off the bike when they go past there. Um, the, the power output is really, really cool because like, so my three-year-old, for an example, he's just barely starting to like play around with like balanced bikes and those types yeah. of things. And this is the perfect bike to get him started on. Because you can literally bring the power down to walking speed just to let him get a feel for the throttle and start right. understanding like what is this doing like how am i going to balance this then you can turn it up slowly as he's getting used to it getting more balance and start riding and then obviously you can start transitioning to the bigger bikes yeah right graduate into the hero graduate into the free rider and so on yeah. We're about to uh, race a plane. I mean, the plane's not gonna be really trying to race us because the plane could go faster than these bikes, but we're gonna ride alongside a plane. <laughs> this is an insane day of work. Woo! He's, he's faster. <laughs> he's definitely faster than we are. <laughs> I'm chasing a plane on an electric bike. Here comes a plane. <laughs> That's so killer. All in all, these bikes are a boatload of fun to ride. Even the little ones, <laughs> that tiny little bike is a wheelie machine. And honestly, so are these. But if I was going to pick any one of them to ride often and to ride seriously, it would be this Ranger, even though it's 
kind of awkward looking compared to like the free riders. This one is so much fun to ride and you get used to it really, really quickly. And I know I talked about it while I was riding, but can't stress enough how much you can feel that the suspension of this is actually properly fitted to the size and weight of this bike, which you don't get with every e-bike. It's only when you step into the more premium stuff like this that you get suspension that's really matched to the size and weight of the vehicle. So, you know, I mean, are they expensive? Yeah, but you're gonna be looking around about the same price for any premium e-bike, even a lot of premium non-assisted bicycles so yeah get out and ride one of these it's a boatload of fun let us know what you think in the comments down below and we'll see you all in the next video